It is good to see you all today. Today is Father's Day, and so we honor all the fathers here today. We honor our fathers who've gone on to be with the Lord. And like with Mother's Day, we take the time to remember all the men who fathered us, whether it's spiritually in Sunday school or were able to direct us toward Jesus Christ. We honor them today as well. Today we also honor who? Our Heavenly Father, right? For some, having a father figure, they've never had one. For some, the figure has not been positive, like it is with some mothers as well. We aren't just um, speaking that of fathers. But God, always, always, in someone to point us toward him. And those are the people, the men that we honor, that have pointed us toward Jesus Christ, and we thank our Heavenly Father for his beloved Son this day. All right, let's see. Next week, the youth are going to care cuts again downtown. And I want to take and give you an opportunity, an outreach opportunity, an opportunity to experience um, worship in a new and different way, a way to get out into community, not ours. Magnolia United Methodist Church. How many of you have heard of it? How many of you have seen it on the news? It's where they had the um, free clinic in, in um, Knoxville, and they had to close it down because the church was in such bad shape. Well, our conference has put a lot of money into the church, and now they were able to open up the clinic. Well, they have a group there that now worships on Sunday evenings outside at 5 o'clock, and then afterwards they feed the community. And so what a wonderful opportunity to be in outreach on a Sunday evening. And so I just give you that as something you may want to add to your calendar. Maybe it's something as a church we could do one Sunday evening. Um, to, to be engaged with East Tennessee in a personal way. All right. Today is Juneteenth. I thought it was the 16th. It is today, the 19th. And so we do remember those who are fighting for freedom um, and racism. And racism takes many forms. And I found this out. You know, I was raised in Virginia. And racism there is mainly, not only, but mainly black and white. But when I went out west to uh, South Dakota and out there, it's um, Native Americans and whites. I know that um, in Miami, it's Cubans and white or Americans. Um, I just think we just need to be aware. It just depends on where we are. There's been a lot of um, Asian um, racism as well. And so we just need to be aware of it in any context we find it. And um, so I give you that today. Please stand as we come into the sacred and holy time of worship. We are justified by faith. We are clothed in Christ. We are sanctified by the Spirit. We are one in God with one another. We place our hope in God. Let us praise God for his self and love, declaring how much God has done for us. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, This Is Our Father's World.
Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. we go to our time of prayer. Are there joys and praises for the community of believers? Yes. All right. And so that's Nancy Russell, yep. correct? And um, for y'all listening live stream, that's Nancy Russell. We'd asked for prayer last week. She had a simple operation, and it turned into an infection, but she's doing much better. So we're going to give God glory for that. Sam Duncan, who had some knee surgery, he's doing extremely well. He was in church today, so that is a blessing as well. Are there others? Yes. It is. Woohoo! I love birthdays, don't y'all? It makes me think I'm just getting to be a finer and finer wine in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Hey, age does something good for that. Okay. Any other joys and praises? Yes. All right. Happy birthday, Ed. <laughs> Any others? Yes. Oh, we are so excited for her. All right. 98. People, that's a long time. Let's think about it. She probably saw what? Horse and buggy? The first cars? Space? Just think of all the things she's witnessed in her lifetime. How amazing is that? Indeed a celebration. Anyone back here? Yes. Is it? Okay, so we'll celebrate Karen as well. Lots of birthdays. All right. Others? All right. What about concerns for the community of believers? Uh, you, mm -hmm. uh, many of you saw the, um, the story about the young lady area that died this week uh, ATV crash she was 15 she is one of my former students mm -hmm. and I know her family and I have taught many of her cousins and um, I just like for special prayers for the family of Laura Beth Childress 
uh, extended family and uh, prayers for her, the friends of her family and her individual friends. That's difficult. Any others we need to add? Okay. As we go to our time of prayer today, and let us continue to remember all of those mass shootings we keep seem to keep having. Um, and I just really thank people they need Jesus Christ. And I think as a church, we've let them down. So let us enter today into this time of prayer and the silence to offer up our repentance for not being bold enough to share Jesus Christ with those who need him. We know what he's done for us. That's our witness. That's our testimony to share. And that we will be bold for Jesus. Um, Jean Wa will continue to bring us into that holy place wherever that is for you some see it as a garden where they go and visit with God um, so wherever that secret place is that you go to um, I'll lead us in the morning prayer and then we'll gather together to um, Say the Our Father. Let us seek our Father's heavenly face, offering up to Him all that we are. Dear Miss Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you as your beloved children, understanding we have been adopted through Jesus Christ, understanding we have a royal inheritance, understanding who we are. And God help us for all the time that we have and that we will buy into our identity that the world gives us or even the identity we ourselves come up with. Because we know the Yada youth and that we were created in your image as your likeness. We thank you for being a God who has walked with us. We thank you for revealing yourself to us this past week, whether it's when we spent time in your word, or maybe we were just singing songs to, to worship you aloud, or maybe we were meditating in stillness to hear your small, still voice. Or maybe we were looking at nature and all you created, and we just cry holy because we are truly amazed. 
at who you are, at who we are, and all you have created in the heavens and on earth. We are reminded that being created in your image, we are unlike any other species in the universe. And that we are that special to you. That is why you came down as a son. Why you died on a cross. And why you were resurrected. For us. That moment of reconciliation. That moment of justification. That moment of salvation. That moment when... We die to our old selves and we put on our new selves when we are no longer what we were, but we are made new in Christ Jesus. We thank you for your divine work. We thank you for the free will that we have been given. As all things are predestined, you still give us free will to choose to engage in your will for all of creation or not. And we choose this day, Jesus Christ. We celebrate birthdays that remind us that, yes, how good you are. We celebrate our children and grandchildren and great-grands, our nieces and nephews, all of those that in their innocence and in who you created them to be, seem to point us towards you through their laughter and their tears, through their questions, trying to figure things out, even when they tell us no. We thank you for them. We thank you for our children and young people today. They live in a crazy world. And I guess I thought the world was crazy when I grew up, but I think it's even crazier now. There's a lot more violence than it was when I grew up. And they have to learn to navigate that as little children. They've had to navigate a pandemic, which was difficult for us adults. To navigate, but how much more difficult for our children? There are many who are not associated in any way with a Christian organization to know about Jesus. There are parents who don't care. We need to take on that responsibility as community. See, we have a church community here, and we know that Christ gave us the commandment to love one another. We have a responsibility to the children we come in contact with and the young people we come in contact with to point them towards you. To come along beside them. To take the time, a commodity that we value almost as much as money. To invest in them for the future of your kingdom, for the future of your glory. That is why we do it, so that they too can know Jesus Christ and the wonderful things he will do in their lives, that he will be with them no matter where they go, no matter the decisions they make. When we all hit that point, and we all have that at least once, if not many times in our lives, when we have to hit our knees and just cry out, please save me. We need to give our children and young people that because he will not leave us nor forsake us. He will walk with us. 
He will reveal himself to us. He will transform us through the Holy Spirit working in and through us. And it is time we become the people of God. Not just any God, the one true living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the way, because Jesus Christ is the way, the God of the truth, Jesus Christ is truth, and God of life, because through Jesus Christ we have life. We offer up those on our prayer list named and unnamed. Those things that we have spoken and left unspoken that we just need to drop into your lap. We need to let go of and let you have it. Not to take it back up again, but to release it for real this time. knowing that you work all things for our good, and knowing as much as we love, care about, or maybe be even angry with, you love them enough to die for them too. We just come fully in this place today to turn our hearts, minds, and spirits with the fullness of who we are, mind, body, and soul, to worship you. We declare you holy. We declare you worthy of all of our praise and worship. We ask these things in the beautiful name of Yeshua Jesus, and with the confidence of children, we pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we go to scripture today, I want to talk about something just briefly. And it's these things. Do you know what they are? Yeah, kneel. What do we do when we kneel? Pray? You know, there's two things that never wear out in the church. Do you know what they are? Pew Bibles and the kneeling pads. Just saying. Now, I don't always issue an altar call? Maybe I should. But see, I think I'm dealing with adults here. And I think you should know or feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit to come forward. It may not even be in response of a word I've said. It may be because you have been bearing that burden too long and you need to let it go. Maybe a loved one it's just really on your heart because they're getting ready to have surgery or engage with chemotherapy, any of variety of ways, dialysis, they're Alzheimer's. And you just want to come forward and lift them up in prayer. Maybe you yourself need a healing touch or maybe you just need to feel the love of the body of Christ and just want hands laid on you. Let's be in church. Read it. It's in scripture. Sometimes you just need to kneel before your Lord. Doesn't mean you need anything. And here's my thing. Don't worry about what anyone else is thinking. They need to be worrying about their own. Mm -hmm. Because we each work out our own salvation through what? Fear and trembling. What you do up here has nothing to do with anyone else between you and God. So, rather we're doing morning prayers, or maybe it's while Jean Wah is, is playing the beautiful preludes we get, and 
and Brandon helps her sometimes, maybe, just to get into this place because the world is just like, you know, when your brain just keeps flashing pictures, keeps running around and around. But yet you've come, you've intentionally come, right, to worship our God. And you can't turn your mind toward him because everything's going there. Maybe you just need to take a brief moment. Everybody's talking, but while she's playing, you just come up and kneel and say, God, juggle it so I can focus on you. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we can have holy encounters with Jesus Christ in our pew. But I want to tell you something else. when we're willing to publicly, for whatever reason, get up and let everybody know that we need him. We need him. The Word of God today comes from Galatians, chapter 3. Let us hear the Word of the Lord. Paul speaking. But before faith came, before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law. That's the Torah, the Old Testament. Kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
How beautiful is that? So we're going to spend some time in the Word today just to um, learn some things, to better understand, um, to connect dots. So it talks about before faith came, and it's talking about really Old Testament times before Jesus. And it's talking about that the law was given, the Torah, the, um, which is considered the first five books. They're considered the books of Moses. And it was through that, the law, that was supposed to bring them to this point of knowing Jesus Christ. And it says that um, the reason is so that we may be justified by faith. What does that mean? We, we say it all the time, justification. We talk about salvation. We talk about redemption. It's that moment when we engage with and come before and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But really justified here is, is um, a legal declaration. It is um, talking about being approved, acquitted, um, freed. It is all of those things. It is talking about um, just a legal sense of what's taken place. So we know what took place, don't we? So we're going to review it for just a second. Jesus Christ came is incarnate and came to earth, is the Son of God and Son of Man, because of the Holy Spirit of Mary, okay? He died on a cross. He was the sacrificial lamb. He was the atonement, right, um, for our sins, right? He, he took care of that. In the legal sense, he paid the cost that we should have been paying, Right? So that we don't have to. He, he took care of that for us. The clarion call of the Reformation by Martin Luther was justification, this, this um, righteousness, this, this acquittal, this understanding that Jesus was the sacrifice and paid the price is by faith. By faith. Now, we know in the Greek, the word faith can be replaced by believe and trust, right? You know that? So, it is by trust in Jesus Christ that we are justified. It's believing in Jesus Christ that we are justified. And it's having faith in Jesus Christ that we are justified. That's what justification is, is that he paid that price for us. We didn't have to, okay? And it says that but after faith has come, after Jesus, we are no longer under the tutor. Remember, in the previous um, verse, it's talking about the tutor being the law. Well, when Jesus Christ came and when he comes into our life, we're no longer under the old things. We are under... Jesus Christ. And with Jesus Christ, who teaches us? The Holy Spirit, right? We are in the age of the Holy Spirit. I've spoken it every week this month um, because it's Pentecost time. Amen. And, and so we need to understand that. We, Jesus did not uh, do away with the law. He what? Fulfilled it. Okay? So that tutor wasn't a bad tutor. It's just that now all of that law has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And we have the Holy Spirit. So then it continues, and I'll probably mess up here, and I'll probably offend somebody, but the word is the word. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, we are all sons of God. It's by position, not gender. We are so hung up in gender nowadays in the world 
We need to look at what's being spoken about Jesus Christ and the kingdom of heaven. We are all sons. What this means is that we are descendants, that we belong to the Father as Jesus belongs to the Father. That's why it's Father's Day, and we think about God today. We understand that we did not come through birth. There was only one birth from the Father, and that was Jesus Christ. We come through adoption. And we need to remember, I've spoken this before, but we've got to be reminded of what took place with adoption. That anything and whoever you were before, your birth certificate, all that, your shot records, all that stuff that was before is erased. It is pulled, it is put in the fire. You do not exist. Your identity is not in anything in the past. It is being adopted. You take on the name of your father. Listen to me, people. We take on that identity. Our identity is in Jesus Christ. It's not anything of the world, and it's not anything we come up with our own. As Christians, through Jesus Christ, our identity is in Jesus Christ. And we are heirs to an inheritance. Heirs to an inheritance. Now, the reason, I, you know, I have a hard time being a woman thinking of being a son, but I do like the fact that in being a son, I get as much as um, anyone else in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Jesus, the firstborn of first fruits, is the one who gets a double portion. But everyone else who's been adopted, because God becomes our Father at this point, through Jesus Christ, we have an inheritance in heaven, and we are all equal. That's God's rules. That's not based on anything in society, in the world we live in. This is God in his kingdom. Jesus talked about it, and Paul's talking about it right now, reminding them, that we are sons of God. Women, if you have trouble being a son, don't worry. The men have a trouble being the bride of Christ. Amen? We just got to work through some things, don't we? The word. We need to think about the connotation in the kingdom of heaven, what it looks like, and not what the world tells us it should look like. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now we could spend all day and, and debate the issue of baptism. Do you baptize children or is it just believers? Or when do you baptize or do you baptize? Or how many times can you be baptized? You've got to love the discussion or the argument. Or the division that the arguments cause, right? We, just, we get hung up on the baptism part instead of focusing on what took place in baptism, and here it's saying we put on Christ. We put on Christ here with the same word as we put on the armor of God. And I got to thinking putting on Christ is putting on the armor of God. You know why? Because I'm going to show you right now. We put on the belt of truth. Who's truth? Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And... He sent with the Father who? The Spirit of truth. So truth for us is Jesus Christ. He said it, I didn't, but I believe it. We put on the belt of truth. And then here it talks about justification and being made righteous. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. It's not the breastplate of our righteousness. It's the breastplate of the righteousness of who? Jesus Christ. We put on the helmet of salvation. Now, we just talked about it. Whose blood was shed, who died on a cross for our sins, who has redeemed us, justified us, and saved us, Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm just telling you here, putting on Christ may be putting on the armor. We put on shoes 
to share the gospel of peace. Now, who gives us peace that surpasses all understanding? Jesus Christ. Okay, we're getting there. Oh, we're getting good now. Who gives us faith? Uh huh. So, what's our shield of faith? And that Jesus Christ, our belief, our trust, our faith in Jesus Christ, that's our shield we protect ourselves with. And then we have the sword. you got to love the sword. It's called the sword of the Spirit. And what is the sword of spirits? Jesus Christ. He is the Word, right? John 1.1. 1, 1. It's the Word. Putting on Christ. See, the put on that is talked about in Galatians through baptism, we put on Christ. In the armor of God, we put on Christ. There's other places we put Christ on as well. In Romans 13, verse 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Greek word means to put on. It's translated put on, but it's more like you sink into a garment. Now, do you have a favorite sweater, a favorite uh, coat, maybe a favorite shirt or T-shirt? Maybe those old jeans that just fit right, you can't wear them out because there's too many holes. Maybe those favorite pair of shoes you just put on. We sink into them, don't we? It's just something wonderful about it. It just feels like a part of us. It's so familiar to us that we just sort of rest in it and like it. That's what it means to put on Christ. How are you putting him on? You have been baptized in the faith. If you have not, let's talk about baptism 101 and see if we can get you there. Amen. But if you are, then you are to put on Christ. You are to learn that he's the way, the truth, and the life. You are to yada know him. You are to get your identity and who you are in him. You are to understand your mission and your calling, your spiritual gifts in light of who he is and the work of the Holy Spirit in you. We're to love our neighbor. The only way we can love our neighbor, those we come in contact with, is through Jesus Christ and through our relationship with the Atad, the one, our Father, the one true living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. On and on and on. Put on Christ. If we want to be bold to share Jesus, we got to put Jesus on. Listen to me, people. It's so easy to just say, yeah, yeah. And here's the thing I'm going to tell you. It doesn't do you any good to just put your sleeves in. You got to put your whole self in. He's either put on or he's not. See, we think scripture is gray. And we can read into it and all this. Sometimes it may be. But in the end, I have found it is black and white. Sin is sin. And holiness is holiness. If you have any sin, you cannot be holy. The only way we become holy is through Jesus Christ, right? He who knew no sin. He who died for our salvation, our justification, our redemption. It's only through Jesus Christ that we are righteous. See, it just comes back to it. And we have not learned to put on Christ. Because we'd rather put on ourselves. Or what the world, or how the world sees us. I'm telling you, until the church, the body of Christ, puts on Christ, we're going to decline and die out. It is time we put on Christ so we can be bold, so we can be about our Father's business, 
So the Holy Spirit has something to work with, amen? Because unless we invite him to work in us, he's going to work in someone else. And we need to understand that in God's kingdom, there's neither Jew nor Greek. No religious or cultural differences. There's neither slave nor free hierarchy, male nor female. We become one. This isn't talking about gender issues. This isn't talking about the body of Christ baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, putting on Christ, our identity, who we are, where we go, what we say, what we do, what we believe is Jesus Christ. I've got to ask you, have you put on Christ? Are you wearing him? Because either you are or you aren't. You can't put on a little bit of him because then you're choosing the world still. You're either all in or you're not. It's the word of God for the people of God. The altar is always open. Don't let anyone keep you from coming. It's not their business. It is your father's business. And it is your business. It's your opportunity to respond. It's your opportunity to put on Christ. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day and this opportunity to engage your word. Help us to put you on. Oh, I understand what that means. Let us be transformed and let us be a people in your word. At this time, before the closing hymn, we have, you can ponder on putting on Christ. I'm just telling you. We've got some time. I'm going to ask Mike and his family to come up. They have um, asked to become members of this church. And it is an exciting time. They, um, y'all can come up here. Oh, yeah, come on up. People want to see you. There you go. Mike is our new um, student ministry director. His wife, Ashley. This is Nathan, Michaela. She goes by Kayla and Jonathan. Did I get it right? Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Um, they're coming on profession of faith. And they have been baptized, so we don't need to do that. But we do need to ask them some questions. And so here um, is where we start, you guys. I'm going to come down front, and y'all can look out there. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without a price. Through renewal of the covenant declared at our baptism and an acknowledging that God, what God is doing for us and affirming our commitment to Christ's holy church, we come at this time. I've already presented to you who is coming forward to join today, but I do have some questions to ask you. And then I have a question to ask y'all. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord 
in union with the church which Christ has opened to peoples of all ages, nations, and races. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Now I'm speaking to y'all. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? The response is, we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? Will you proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ? Will you surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness as they grow, may grow in their trust of the Lord and be found faithful in their service to others? We will. Will you pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life? We will. As members of the Church Universal, will you be loyal to the um, Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries and its elders? As members of this congregation, First Church, will you be faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Absolutely. Amen. 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 Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And there is a congregational response. It will be up on the board. Join with me. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you, in the body of Christ, in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The grace the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. I welcome you to First Church. We're so glad to have you. Excited, excited, excited. Welcome. Let's give my hand. When I give the benediction, y'all can go sit down. Y'all, um... Go back to the back of the church so people can greet you. Maybe go out in the um, narthex. That's what they call that. Over there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Are you, are you ready to put on Christ today? Let's stand and sing. Come, Christians, join to sing. <laughs>
reach out and welcome Mike and the family um, on your way out. And I give you this blessing. Go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, being about our Father's business, putting on Jesus Christ, and going forth empowered and equipped by the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Shalom. Thank you.